outside to do whatever, be sure you take a buddy with you to hold the door. Do me a favor, please. It's only messed up one time in seven performances. Check your cell phones and turn them off. You think, oh, it's down, the volume's down, it won't matter. Inevitably, it's going to rain, and especially if there's few moments that you don't want to be the one that's going to fuck that so Just check them and just turn them off, please. I said this a couple of nights ago. There's a, a man right over here, and he said, can you tell me how to turn this off? And so I said, find someone under 40. And so they were able to do it. We're, we're, with the new season and with the new and, the, and what we're doing, we also are so happy. I'm just thrilled. We have a new executive artistic director. Uh, she's come aboard already. The things that she's bringing, the, the whole just countenance to it is fantastic. I want you all to meet Jenny, yeah. Martha, and yeah. Thank you very much. We also have a volunteer organization here that I kind of throw around, and it's called Entourage. If you would like to see the people who who ushered, and the people who greeted you downstairs, and the people over at the concession, that's entourage. We're here to support the actors and support the crews. So outside, over here, by a poinsettia, on a high table, if you'd like to just be on the list or more information, fill it out, please, or you can go to the website that's marked in your, in your programs as well. Um, donations, donations. Oh, do I need to apologize for the price of the ticket? Is it, is it a little tough? Is it hard? We've had people that have come from all corners. It's been the mission of this theater since it, it, it came into being that three tickets so that anyone, regardless of their economic status, can come and enjoy live, quality, professional theater. Your donations helps us do that. Thank you. In the, in the lobby, at the concession, all along, the QR codes are taped to the walls for your convenience. There are jars for your convenience. We appreciate the donations. Part of the donations also, um, through this at one point, we are honoring and, and, and lifting up uh, an organization called Change One. And you'll see that in your program as well. Change One is a transitional organization. When foster kids turn 18, they're out. And so Change One steps in beforehand and during and helps them learn housing and finance and education and how to become adults so they're not just struggling with what they're doing and growing up. So your donations with us helps us do things like that as well. Are there any veterans in the house? If you're a veteran, would you stand up for me, please? Any veterans, okay? Yes. Very nice. Okay. Now the play. We're here because we're here. We're here because we're here. You folks are in the play already. You are the townspeople. You are the mothers, maybe the fathers, maybe the lovers that followed their loved ones into battle. You're the townspeople that came out to here and it just went on for years. You're hiding in the bushes, in the ditches. You're witnessing the history that became. So we're all here because we're here. You're going to see soldiers. You're going to see soldiers in, 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 in what they're doing. You're also going to see narrators. The narrators, it's important to us that the narrators, everything that you hear spoken in this play is a quote from someone that was at this battle. And it was put in their letters and in their journals and their telegram and, it, and all the things written, even spoken to someone who wrote it down. But everything you hear, the narrators are very specific so that you, you'll hear what they had to say. And we give them their name again. And you'll hear their name because it keeps their spirit alive. And we will remember them. We will. Act one goes quickly. It's insightful. It sets it all up. Come on out. Uh, we have refreshments for you. We have tissues for sale at the concession stand because you're going to need them for Act 2. I promise you that. And then Act 2, you'll be transported. You'll be enlightened. And I hope you'll be moved. 
But you're here. We're here. Because you're here. So that we will remember them. So let me say, welcome to No Man's Land. God of Flanders, my Mario, where God of Flanders, my Mario, beer will get wine and brandy. And a sack and a sugar candy. Well, you go to Flanders, my Mario. Well, you go to
Come on and join. Come on and join. Come on and join Lord Krishna's army. Come on and join. Come on and join. Come on and join Lord Krishna's army. Ten bob a week. Plenty grabs a week. Bloody great boots make blisters on your feet. Come on and join. Britain, Lord Krishna wants you. Join your country's army. God save the king. Your king and country need you. A call to arms. An addition of 100,000 men is immediately necessary in the present grave national emergency. Call save the king! Old public school and university antiquity makes an urgent appeal to their fellow public school and university men to list it once. God save the king! Down with the Germans! Down with them all! Oh, army and navy, be sure of their fall! Spare not one! The deceitful spies! Rip out their tongues! Cut out their eyes! Down! Down! Down with them all! Your army is still calling men! God save our gracious King, long live our noble King, God save our King. Send him victorious, happy and glorious, long to reign over us, God save the King. You can't imagine the wall theater in those days. Everyone thought we would beat the Germans. The war would be over by Christmas. I wanted to be a soldier. I wanted to fight for England. So I went with my friends to the Duke of York's headquarters in Sloan Square and enlisted. Dick Barron, 2nd London Mounted Brigade. I wish to goodness I were in the army. I felt restless, excited, eager to do something desperate for the cause of England. Then the impulse came, sending the blood tingling all over my body. Why not join the army now? A great and glorious suggestion. I might not be too late. W.T. Collier, <laughs> Artist Rifles. I think it was excitement more than anything that made me join up. I lived in the country and there were not many boys my age, so I thought it would be nice to be with a lot of lads on something of a picnic. Because we all thought the war would be over by Christmas. Robert Burns, 7th Queen's Own Cameron Highlander. I swear by Almighty God that I will be faithful and bear true allegiance to His Majesty King George V, and that I will, as in duty bound, faithfully defend His Majesty against all enemies and will observe and obey all orders of the generals and officers set over me. So help me, Lord. Brother Bertie went away to do his bits the other day. With a smile on his lips and his lieutenant pips on a corner bright and gay. As the train moved out he said, remember me to all the birds. Then he wagged his paw and went away to war shouting out these pathetic words. Goodbye, 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 goodbye. goodbye. Wipe a tear, baby dear, from your eye. Though it's hard to part, I know, now I know I'll be tickled to death to go. Don't cry, don't cry, don't sigh, don't sigh. There's a silver lining in the sky. On swallow thing, cheerio, chin chin, the poo to the goodbye. All the villagers in group were out to welcome us and see us off. Among them was an old aunt of mine, my aunt Eliza, who I was very pleased to see. When the time came to march off, I threw my arms around her and said, Goodbye, Aunt Eliza. <laughs> this was heard by my pals, and they all took up the cry. <laughs> the old lady was laughing and crying. She never forgot that farewell. Don MacDonald. Royal Sussex Regiment. Don't cry, don't sigh, don't sigh. There's a silver lining in the sky. Bon soir, old thing, cheerio, chin chin, not food to the loo, goodbye. The whole of the ship's company, from the top deck right down, including ourselves, suddenly burst into song. 
It's a long way to Tipperary. It's a long way to go. It's a long way to Tipperary. To the sweetest girl I know. Goodbye, Piccadilly. Farewell, Leicester Square. It's a long, long way to Tipperary. But my heart's right there. Up till then, the whole thing had been most enjoyable. But my heart stood still. I suddenly realized that this was warfare. I may not return. No. It had been a field day up till then. I enjoyed everything. But now, we were on our way. Dick Barrett, 2nd London Mountain Brigade. Nothing could have been more romantic than our passing out to the open sea. The moving boat left a visible track on the calm water, which seemed to stretch right back to the shore, as though to remind us that we could never be entirely cut off from the dear land of our birth. Goodbye, good old England. Goodbye. Private W.T. Collier, our Israelites. Farewell, Leicester Square. It's a long, long way to Tipperary. When we went up, it was pouring rain, I remember. It's raining hard. We had no idea what we were going into. We were just on foot, marching, laden with all our equipment, all you could carry. And suddenly, you begin to see the sky lighting up, <coughs> flashing, 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 and you begin to hear the noise of the guns. You know you are getting near. Jack Rogers, Sherwood Foresters. Well, Dad. I have been in the trenches from last Friday till Tuesday and would have enjoyed it very much only for the rain, which made us look like mudlocks. We had a few narrow escapes. Last Sunday, the Germans sent us a few presents from the Kaiser. They were shrapnel shells. Or as we call them, Jack Johnson's. They came very near our trenches, but never hurt anybody. <laughs> the boys were laughing every time one bursted. There seems to be no fear in the old Lincolns. No one seems to realize it is active service. P.S. We get a nice drop of rum every day. Private Jack Sweeney, 1st Battalion, Lincolnshire Regiment. Pack up your troubles in your own kit bag and smile, smile, smile. While you the Lucifer to light your fag, smile, boys, that's the style. Was the use of worrying? It never was worthwhile. So pack up your troubles in your own kit bag and smile, smile, smile. They're all the greatest rats in the trenches that you ever saw. They're so tame that they don't run away, but just huddle along right in front of you, just out of reach. The other day, one of our men went up to one and kicked it like a football. Second Lieutenant Jeffrey Lillywhite, Royal Engineers. I had a lice hunt this forenoon. Lice! Hello, my uh, cock thousands. Quite big fat ones and wee fellows. They get to the folds of your kilt and down the seams of your shirt, the devils. How they get there, I don't know. Nothing kills them. Powders, etc., have no effect. The only way is to heave a few rum jars at them. Private Peter McGregor, 14th Battalion, Argyle and Sutherland Highlanders. 
So pack up your troubles in your own kit bag and smile, smile, smile. If you want to find the Sergeant Major, I know where he is. I know where he is. I know where he is. If you want to find the Sergeant Major, I know where he is. Demon all the squad, he's a rum. I see him, I see him. Demon all the squad, he's rum. I see him. Demon all the squad, he's rum. If you want to find the box, you private, I know where he is. I know where he is. I know where he is. If you want to find the box, you private, I know where he is. Buried in the deep shell hole. I see him. I see him. Buried in the deep shell hole. I see him. Buried in the deep. At night we were beyond sentry, end shoulders above the trench, gazing into no man's land, which was lines of tangled barbed wire in front of our trench and also in front of the Germans. Only yards at times separated us. <coughs> in fact, so close you could hear a chap coughing. <coughs> Private Tom MacDonald. 9th Battalion, Royal Sussex Regiment. Five minutes ago, I heard a sniper fire. Why did he do it? Starlight overhead, blank stars. I'm wide awake and some chap's dead. Siegfried Sassoon, Royal Welsh Fusilier. If you want a fine the whole battalion, I know where they are. I know where they are. I know where they are. If you want to find the whole battalion, I know where they are. Joe and I, we were a pair of good pals. We shared everything from a paper and pen to write home with to the blackened polish our buttons. We were like that. It was long distance shelling that got him. Joe had one fault. He was careless. He stood up in the trench instead of keeping down. He stood up. A lump of shrapnel got him. Poor Joe. He moaned. I wanted to attend to him, but I couldn't. I just told him the stretcher bearers were coming, and they'd take him away. He'd already gone over when they came. I never touched anything he had, you know, to remember him by. I let it all go with him. That was me power gone. And I was too full to speak to anybody after that. I never powered up with anybody else. Not after that feeling. George Littlefair, Durham Light Infantry. I want to go home. I want to go home. Shrapnel around me to roar. I don't want this so war anymore. Take me far over the sea, where the Alamand cannot get me. Oh my, I don't want to die. I want to go. broke 
broken. Now the winter of the world with perishing great darkness closes in. For after spring had bloomed in early Greece, and summer blazed her glory out with Rome, and autumn softly fell, a harvest home. But now for us, wild winter and the need of sowings for new spring and blood for seed. 1914 by Wilfred Owen, Manchester, Britain. Oh my, I don't want to die. I want to go home. I want to go home. The war ain't so bad if you're wearing a sock, but being a private won't get you so far. Take me far over the sea. Where the snipers, they can't get at me. Oh my, I don't want to die. I want to go. When this bloody war is over, no more soldier in for me. When I get my silly clothes on, Oh, how happy we shall be. People said when we enlisted, fame and medals we would win. But the fame is in the God's room, and the medals made of tin. We were in the trenches on iron rations and were due to leave the line when some pride spark at divisional headquarters said, Oh, keep the men on iron rations when they come out on rest. And why was that? Oh, it was to keep the men hardy, don't you know? Well, this was winter. November. The men did not like this at all, and they stuck a notice up, and it said, No hot rations! No fucking fights! Andrew Bowie, Queen's own Cameron Highlanders. Grousing, grousing, grousing. Oh, it's bloody well grousing. Grousing at the rations and grousing at the pain. Dearest Mater, stop. With a hey ho, the wind and the rain, stop. The rain, it raineth every day. Stop. Except when it's snowing. <laughs> Please stop. Captain Harry Yoxall, King's Royal Rifle Corps. Raining, raining, raining. Oh, it's bloody well raining. Raining all the morning and raining all the night. It's almost flooded the trenches, particularly in the neighborhood of Knoxville. The, the Germans are suffering as much as we are. The men in the trenches say that the Saxons call across to them and say they have had enough of it. General Sir John French, British Expeditionary Force. During the winter of 1914, it was not unusual for little groups of men to gather in the front trenches and there hold impromptu concerts singing patriotic and sentimental songs. The Germans did much the same, and on calm evenings, the songs from one line floated to the trenches on the other side and were there received with applause and sometimes calls for an encore. Official history, Sixth Golden Highlanders. Deutschland, Deutschland, die alles, über alles in der Welt. Deutschland, Deutschland, die alles, über alles in der Welt. Turn the dark clouds in.
inside out till the boys come home. Dear son, cheer up and look after your mother for dad. Say your prayers for me every night so dad will come back to you. Bless you and good night. Dad. Today is a red letter day. I got my parcel this morning with a tin of peaches, loaf and butter, fish paste, tobacco, sleeping helmet, chocolate, a pair of socks and a towel. I had fish paste for tea and peaches for sweet at dinner. Grand. Private Tom McDonald, 9th Battalion, Norfolk Regiment. I wish the sea were not so wide that parts me from my love. I wish the things men do below were known to God above. I wish that I were back again in the glens of Donegal. They'll call me coward if I return, but a hero if I fall. Patrick McGill, London Irish Regiment. <clears throat> What would happen, I wonder, if the armies suddenly and simultaneously went on strike and said, some other method must be found of settling this dispute? Hmm. Winston Churchill, First Lord of the Admiralty, November 1914. In the name of the divinity, I beseech thee to cease the clang of arms while Christendom celebrates the feast of the world's redemption. Pope Benedict XV, 1914. German leaders accepted the Holy Father's request for a ceasefire at once. However, the Allied forces did not. The Pope's request for the signing of a Christmas truce was arrogantly rejected.
From Division Headquarters, friendly intercourse with the enemy, unofficial armistices, and the exchange of tobacco and other comforts, however tempting and occasionally amusing they may be, are absolutely for, for prohibited. D.T. Forster Walker, Brigadier General, December 1914. Dear mothers of England, your soldier sons send their fond love to you overseas this Christmas day in the chorus we now unite in singing Seated round the campfire on a Christmas day A band of British soldiers in a land so far away Are longing for their loved ones in a dear home Wish them Merry Christmas. I take them by the hands. As ten fiber ten soldier and for the dear ones far away. God bless mother, father, sister, brother. At home on Christmas Day. We wish you a Merry Christmas, we wish you a Merry Christmas, we wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. We wish you a Merry Christmas, we wish you a Merry Christmas, we wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. December 24th, 1914. I have got a selected little party together who, led by my centurion voice, are going to take up position in our trenches where we are closest to the enemy about 80 yards, and from 10 p.m. onwards, we are going to give the enemy every conceivable song in harmony, <laughs> from carols to Tipperary. My fellows are most amused with the idea and will make a rare noise when they get at it. Our object will be to drown the now too familiar strains of Deutschland über Alles and back them right. We hear from their trenches every evening. Captain Sir Edward Holt, Scottish Guard, Speed, Autumn and Marx, Brudingstein, Bestet und Treu, Die Rat, Die Wartung, Oh, why not then, Tommy? Tommy, come over here. Oh, come over here yourself. <laughs> it was Christmas Day in the cook house, the happiest day of the year. Men's hearts were full of gladness, and their bellies full of fears. In private short house, his face as bold as brass. What he said? He said, We don't want your Christmas pudding. You can stick it up your tidings of comfort and joy. Comfort and joy. Oh, tidings of comfort and joy. It was Christmas Day in the harem, and the eunuchs were standing round. And hundreds of beautiful women were stretched out on the ground. When in came the lordly sultan gazing on his mighty halls. He said, what do you want for Christmas, boys? And the eunuchs answered, tidings of comfort and joy, comfort and joy. Oh, tidings of comfort and joy. Since I never met 
Scheißend deine Blätter, du grüßt nicht nur Sonne seid, nein, auch im Winter, wenn es schneit, o Talmam, o Talmam, wie treu sind deine Blätter. Midnight. We arrive in single file, all quiet, in line. The Germans opposite us are singing. The Christmas carol is cut up by rifle fire. Dear little God of love, born in this night, how could you have ever loved mankind? Boris Lointon, Commandant CCM Company. with the parcels hanging from us. All was quiet, no shooting, little snow. We placed a tiny Christmas tree in our dugout. The company commander, myself, the lieutenant, and the two orderlies. We placed a second lighted tree on the parapet. Gauclem, the 133rd Saxon Regiment. Like the footlights of a theater. It was a beautiful moonlit night, frost on the ground, white almost everywhere. And there was a lot of commotion in the German churches. And then there were those lights. I, I don't know what they were. And then in three different languages, they sang Stile Nacht. I shall never forget it. Stille Nacht, Heilige Nacht. It was one of the highlights of my life. Albert Moren of the Second Queen's Regiment. Looking out over the parapet, we could see that he had left his trench and was standing on the top bank in the open and in full view. He then walked towards us and stood in the middle of no man's land. He either had full confidence in the Christian spirit of Christmas Day or was completely round and twist. But whatever it was, we admired his guts. One of our company followed suit and went out there to meet him. And there they were, shaking hands like a couple of long lost school chumps. It was unbelievable. In no time at all, a whole crowd of Germans had left their trench and gathered around the two of them, where eventually the whole of my company assembled. Sergeant G.H. Morgan, Royal Walkshire Regiment. They came out of their trenches and fought across unarmed. What for our men to do? Shoot? We could not shoot unarmed men. Count and with like him. Brigadier General, 15th Brigade. One of the Germans took a chance, jumped up on top of the trench, and shouted it out, 
Merry Christmas, Tommy! So, of course, our boy said, well, if he can do it, we can do it. And we all jumped up. The sergeant major shouted, get down! But we said, shut up, sergeant! It's Christmas time. Men who 
only a few hours before we were trying to kill. Very nice fellows to look at. They look more like university students and soldiers. And one of them said, We don't want to kill you, and you don't want to kill us. So why should? We are Saxons. You are, you are Anglo-Saxons. We don't want to fight. Well, what about the cars then? Eh? I mean, what do you think of the cars then, old lad? Bring, Bring him, him here, here and we'll shoot, shoot him, him for you. <laughs> <laughs> One German said to me, Do you know where the Essex Road in London is? Yeah. My uncle had a shoe repairing shop there. That's funny. <laughs> There's a barber shop on the other side where I used to work. <laughs> <laughs> the Germans could all speak pretty good English because before the war, <laughs> Britain was invaded by Germans. Every pork butcher was German, <laughs> every barber shop was German, and they were all over here getting the lowdown on the country. <laughs> it's ironic when you think about it because he must have shaved my uncle at times, yet my bullet might have found him. His bullet might have found me. Er ist ein Kinder geboren in Park. Er ist ein Kinder geboren in Park. Kwam op de Aarde voor ons allemaal. Kwam op de Aarde voor ons allemaal. Every sort of souvenir was exchanged. Addresses given and received. Photos of families shown, etc. One of our fellows offered a German a cigarette. The German said. Virginian? Aye, straight cut. Oh, well, thanks. I only smoke Turkish. <laughs> <laughs> it gave us all a good laugh. <laughs> I annexed it in a raspberry from the sergeant's dugout and gave it to a stodgy and bespectacled Saxon. And in return, he gave me a leather case containing five cigars. <laughs> in my mouth, there's a pipe. Presented by Princess Murphy. In the pipe, German tobacco. From a prisoner, you say, or a captured trench, maybe. No. Oh, dear, no. From a live German soldier. From his own trench. The prize souvenir, however, was a German regular dress helmet. A celebrated pickle album. Our barbering in this... In this Tickler's <laughs> <laughs> plum and apples, so called jam. They asked for marmalade, but we'd not seen any ourselves since we left England. One of the German officers took a photo of English and German soldiers arm in arm and exchanged caps and helmets. They were really <laughs> magnificent, the whole thing. And jolly good sorts. We now have a very different opinion of the Germans. We're having another truce on New Year's Day because the Germans want to see how the photos come out. <laughs> we all sang every song we could think of. The bonfire was lit. We all walked about as though it were a picnic. The place no well. Oh, ten and vomit. Oh, come, all ye faithful. I thought this an extraordinary thing. Two nations singing the same carol in the middle of a war. No end, no end, no end, no end. What is the king of Israel? Ihr klingt erla kommet, o kommet doch all. O come to the manger in Bethlehem's stall. And seeds must rejoice in this glorious sight. The Father in heaven has sent us this light. Commanding officer George Painter arrived on the scene with a hearty... Well, my lad, to make Christmas to you! <laughs> this is Sam Garlick, isn't it? I've got something special for you. A little surprise to celebrate this fine show with. And he produced from his pocket a large bottle of rum. Not ration rum, but the proper <laughs> stuff. Yeah! Oh, you cooked it, and in an heavy, ceremonious manner, drank our hills and to his comrade. A wassail, a wassail, all over the town. Our toasted is white and our bread it is brown. Our bowl it is made from the white maple tree. With a wassailing bowl, he'll drink unto thee. 
and it's to our horse and to her right ear. May God send our master a happy new year. A happy new year. Where's Eddie Ditsy with a wassailing bow with three spells to thee? And here's to Brown Mary and to her broad horn. May God send our master a good crop of corn, a good crop of corn, that we may all see with a wassailing bow will drink up to thee. It was then possible to note many fallen comrades, both German and English, who had lain between the two lines under a blanket of snow, the result of a, a battle the previous November between Jäger from our corps and the English. So in the grey light of dawn, our platoon commander, Lieutenant Gross, met an English officer, and they agreed to bury the dead behind the two lines. Hugo Clem, the 133rd Saxon Regiment.
This officer kept on pointing to our dead and saying, Les braves, c'est bien dommage. Those brave men, it's such a shame. Edward Ledwich, Royal Inisculum Fusiliers, Artillery Wood Cemetery, Plat 2, Row B, Grave 5. Es ist ein Rosensprungen aus einer Wurzelzart. Wie uns die Alten sungen von Jesu war die Art und hat ein Blümlein bracht mitten im kalten Winter vor zu der halben Nacht. English lieutenant said there was a comrade who had been killed the previous afternoon, and they wished to bury this man. I said, why not? Of course you can do it. And so they brought the dead man, laid him on the ground, and we all laid a handful of earth upon him. Captain Joseph Seward, 17th Bavarian Regiment. And I don't mind telling you, when I was looking at his grave, tears was running down my face, because we were bosom pals, and we never even got to say so long to one another. George Littlefair, Durham Light Infantry. Oh, fabulous fragrance to describe, so I won't attempt it, but the ceremony that followed was different. We had the most wonderful joint burial ceremony. Our padre arranged prayers and psalms that were first read in English and then in German by a boy studying for the ministry. The Germans formed up on one side and the English on the other, the officers in front, every head bent. 
Yes, I think it was a sight I will never see again. Second Lieutenant Arthur Pelham Byrne of the 6th Corn and Highlands. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. The Herr is my hurte. He will not mangan. He maketh me to lie down in the green pastures. Er weidet mich auf eine grünen Aue. He leadeth me beside the still waters. Führet mich zum frischen Wasser. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Und ob ich schon wanderte im finsteren Tal, fürchte ich kein Unglück. Later, a Scottish soldier appeared with a football which seemed to come out of nowhere. And a few minutes later, a real football game cut on the way. The Scots marked their goal mouth with their strange little hats and we did the same thing with ours. It was far from easy to play on the frozen ground, but we continued keeping rigorously to the rules. <laughs> Us Germans really hold when a gust of wind revealed that the Scots bore no draws under their kids. <laughs> and we hooted and whistled every time we caught a glimpse of a posterior belonging to one of yesterday's enemies. But the now commanding officer heard about it. He sent an order that we must put a stop to it. Point. Point! A little later, they drifted back to our trenches and the fraternization and <coughs> oh, the game ended with a score of three to two in favor of Fritz against Tommy. Oberstleutnant Johann Neumann of the 133rd Saxon Royal Regiment. We ended up singing everything from Good King Wenceslas on the down to ordinary Tommy songs. We ended up with Old Lang Syne, which we all, English, Scots, Irish, Prussian, Wurzemurgers, joined in. It was absolutely astounding. If I had seen it on a cinematograph film, I should have sworn that it was fact. Captain Sir Edward Hulse, Scots Guard. Should old acquaintance be forgot, and never brought to mind, should old acquaintance be forgot in the <coughs> of Woodland Sign For Woodland Sign My dear For Woodland Sign We'll take a cup of kindness yet for Woodland Sign Run up the brace and put the gowans on, but we want the money of every foot singing old lang syne. It was as if we had decided to end the war all by ourselves. Could it really have happened like this? If all the troops all along the line had refused to fight on both sides, would the war have ended there and then? If we'd all walked away at that point, could the result have been a truce? I doubt it. 
it's a thought. Sergeant G.H. Morgan, Royal Yorkshire Regiment. And here's a hand, my trusty fear, and here's a hand of thine. We'll take a cup of kindness yet for General handshaking, arms were resumed, and everyone called back to the trench. <coughs> Cavalry Corps. The Commander in Chief feels with grave displeasure the reports he has received on recent incidents of unauthorized intercourse with the enemy, and directs that the officers concerned be so informed. It appears that troops, under an improper use of a flag of truce, and on occasions without that formality, have entered into communication with the enemy. It is to be clearly understood that on no account will any officer or man take such action. <laughs> Lieutenant General C.F.N. McGrady, British Army, January 1st, 1915. A German soldier was walking along his parapet, carrying a bucket, when a member of my company, further up the line, took deliberate aim and shot him. <laughs> Inevitable, perhaps, ordered, maybe. But I felt unhappy that it had been one of us who broke the unwritten truce. No, unfortunate man, no sooner is the ground when they hit us with everything they had. A rapid firing to exceed all previous firings. The war was on again, and with the vengeance. same bit of earth for Christmas 1915, 1916, and 1917. However, the Christmas truce was never to be repeated. By the end of the war, 68 million men had been mobilized, more than 9 million killed. Today, No Man's Land is home to cattle, sheep, hundreds of cemeteries, and thousands of unmarked graves. From the air, the lines of the trenches are still visible drawn by a shift in the color patterns of the crops growing below. In the small Belgian town of Ypres, World War I is remembered every single night of the year. At 8 p.m., people gather near the edge of town at the site of an old medieval gate 
which the troops marched through en route to the Western Front. Each night of the year, the last post is sounded, and four words are spoken. We, we will remember them. For a single night, no man's land was every man's land. And we, the lowest of the ranks, achieved what the Pope himself could not. In the middle of the war, we had ourselves a Merry Christmas.
Miss. <laughs> Big step. Big step. Thank you. Thank you. Take us to get home. You know what we need to do? What? We need to see if we can find someone who will do like, um, a joint headshot session for us, so we can get it cheaper. Not like together. I know, but that's but what I thought you meant at first. Maybe we could at least ask them to have one picture where it's just us together. We're like, we're like back to back. Oh, oh we should recreate a uh, Mary Kate and Ashley picture. That would be funny. But I do need head new headshots. Me too. Because mine are from college, and I just look. I look different. My hair is different. I I wonder what the key is. The kids that don't get to play about World War One. I mean, I know, obviously, but I was just like, I'm intrigued by it. Because she's the leaker. Or like, I don't know where they're supposed to be
do you turn these off? Uh, On the black bottle or the black button? Yeah. Oops. Oh dear mom. What'd you do? I don't know. Uh, All I did was press this button. No. The button that literally says the word power. I hope. Oh, no. I guess we've decided we will not be touching anything further. <laughs> Thank God of riches are coming in. He murdered you. He'd be like, something happened. He said, nobody wanted All the audience left. Like they're supposed to. If that is the day, we gotta go. Okay. I like that. Linda. Oh, thank you. It was so hot. I know. So People, I alerted everybody. I had, I had, there was, right before Steve and I do this hand thing, there was this big sweat drop just landing on my nose. And I thought, I have to get that out before he looks at my face because he's just going to look at the big sweat drop. <laughs> <laughs> it was really yeah. Well, it's this, it's this, it's this church in But, um, we were talking earlier about it. it's like the air conditioning is its own music. It, it decides is. if it wants to come on. It decides when it breaks. Yeah. Real Well, did it? Did it? Was a show? Okay. Oh, really flat. It's not really good. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, YouTube. It wasn't as good as last. Okay. YouTube. YouTube is. But it's a Monday too. Like you zoom off the weekend. This like, is the, Normally you don't hit a Monday after a weekend. Like you don't. And a also a week. We also signed it off. Yeah, we haven't had a day off for a very long time. We've we we done this show every day for two weeks. Yeah. yeah I mean, okay. I, uh, I can't remember. This is vocally. Yes. Yeah. I know. I don't know. Hello. 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 Oh, thank oh, you. So I, that's why I said Dave last night. It was just mad. It was mad. So I didn't expect to see you guys all might go through what I usually go through with, like, at the show in. And, yeah, and so we all really sick. Well, at some point, Jack spit into my mouth this yeah. evening. So, not on purpose. Never know. So, I'm hoping he's had all his vaccinations. Yes, well, I have too, so I'm, yeah. I'm sure I'm okay. Hi. Well, y'all go home and get some rest. We couldn't do it without you, and it wouldn't be beautiful without you. This was a, a big show, oh my gosh. Yeah, it was a great show. Lots of Lunch and game on it, too. What would be the higher paying, like, sound quality? It is. It's all about the heavy work. Thank you, thank you.
Eisen ersetzt. 